welcome to Laughing Monkey Music Show. Today I'm Dean. Dean is from the Dead Milkman. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Good. I've been a fan of you for a very long time. Just like everyone else, I heard Bitch and Camaro and Big Lizard in high school. I was 15 or 16 when it came out. So yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty awesome. Pretty hilarious going against some of the other things. I, and as much as, I, as a metalhead, I really thought it was hilarious. Oh, that's you cool. Know, you know, yeah, we, we kind of appealed to a lot of different uh, types of fans, which is kind of cool. It did. And when you guys came out, I mean, the joke is it's kind of punky, but you were also kind of not punky, you know, because you weren't in the same looking like punks either. You know what I mean? You're, you it wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't like uh, hardcore music, you know. Right. Pop punk, I, but not pop punk, like, not like Green Day, but like it was, but it, it had it had melody to it. I'm saying it was poppier. Yeah. I'm and saying we, it wasn't. We had more clean guitars than most bands out at the time. Excellent. That's a better way of saying it. Yeah. Not pop punk. Sorry. That does sound weird, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Bad host, bad host. When you guys came out like that, and and you guys, obviously, was it more of an explosion at that point from what you were doing? And then that album came out pretty fast. Was like I'm saying, yeah. I mean, uh, we started like in '83, and then the first album with Bitch and Camaro, and it came out in '85. And yeah, we had done a tour that summer uh, that we had booked ourselves, which was kind of a disaster because nobody knew who we were. Um, but by the time uh, the fall rolled around the colleges came back and bitch and Camaro took off. And so we were off to the races after that. It was kind of cool. My buddy had, had actually had a bitch and Camaro. So we loved that song. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best song to play in his car. It's bitch and Camaro. Um, and then punk rock girl, you followed up, followed up with that one. Another bigger hit or actually I don't know how it was charted, but it was quite big. Yeah. It was much bigger than the, uh, much bigger than Bitch and Camaro. At least it had a more "quote unquote" mainstream appeal. Um, yeah. With uh, you know the video had uh, plenty of airplay on MTV in the late eighties, so that was good for us too. And you kept doing albums. You got some, you have some of the best album titles: Beals of Bubba, Metaphysical Graffiti, hilarious. And actually, I do believe you have a vinyls coming out, right? You re issuing a vinyl for that yeah we got the we got the rates back to metaphysical graffiti a year or so ago and um yeah it's going to be out on uh, black friday record store day this year that's uh friday november 25th been working on uh putting the whole thing together for over a year now and uh it's going to be like in a gatefold sleeve and it's going to come with uh, the album and then there were these weird little interstitial kind of jams that we did in the studio, which people have been calling Earls over the years. Rodney kind of free associated while we, uh, the, the, the rest of us kind of jammed. And uh, we put those on a seven inch single, which will be in the package. And then um, the other thing that we have in there is um, when the original album came out, um, we created a, uh, a goofy Methodist coloring book um, and uh, it was just for promotional use only back in the day, but we've uh, gone ahead and, and printed up, uh, reprinted them, and that's going to be in the package too. So yeah, oh, it's, wow. it's, it's a cool thing, and uh, I have a copy of it, and it looks great. It came out great, so we're excited for that to be uh, released. And people have to remember that with the coloring book, God doesn't want you coloring out of the lines, right? Yeah, you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't color outside the lines. It goes, God, it's, like, it's, a, it's, a, it's a line in the video. If people aren't aware of it, go back and check it out. Yeah. It's pretty hilarious. That's a once again, it's hilarious. Um, and, and it's funny because I just saw on um, eBay or, or, or one of those places, someone's actually trying to sell it. They actually have that album, 200 bucks. So, yeah, like, I've so seen crap. So, this out there. Yeah, I've this is like great a... for the fans. You know, this is now this is what the fans need because I $200 for an album. I mean, I love yeah. you guys, but I ain't paying $200 <laughs> for if I had an album out, I wouldn't pay $200. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's for the diehard collectors, I guess, who want the original pressing or something. Yeah, I saw, I think I saw a big lizard out there for like over $300 or yeah, it's insane. That's crazy. Yeah, but but so, but I'm saying this is much more affordable and actually offers more stuff too. Yeah, and it's so, been remastered. I mean, it sounds great. It sounds awesome. So, yeah, we're very pleased with the way the whole thing turned out. So, looking forward to that getting out there. So, so like, do you not have all the masters now? Or are you still have some you don't have masters? We still have, we, uh, we just got the uh, rights back to the first three records. So Big Lizard, um, Eat Your Paisley, and um, Bucky 
Fellini. Yeah. Um, right and uh, there was a little blip where they went offline for a little while. And uh, but we got them back online last week. And uh, so I'm not sure what we're going to do with those. You know, we have we can take our time with that. But, yeah, it's nice to have have that stuff back in our uh, control yeah. after many, many, many years. So. Well, I, I think a reissue those would be nice at some point for the fans to have a nice final copy, a new fresh printed copy of those. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out. So, and then we're, I think next year uh, we'll we'll be getting a hold of um, Beelzebubba, which of course <laughs> uh, had Punk Rock Girl on it. So yeah, that that'll yeah. be good. That is awesome. That is awesome. What about um, actually uh, some new music? Is that something that could? Yeah, happen? yeah, we've been <laughs> working on that too for a while. So. Um, look back three years ago, um, and, and uh, in the uh, early part of 2020, um, before the apocalypse, you mean before the apocalypse, before Horseman, yeah. yes, yes, so yes. What happens uh, in the in the world of the dead milkman? We kind of joke around that we have a, like we have like a board meeting in January, you know, we, yeah. we get together and have, have a dinner and have some uh, drinks and whatever, and we talk about what, what kind of things we want to do for the year. Yeah, and uh, in January of 2020, one of the things that we decided we wanted to do was um, one, record a new, uh, write some new songs and record a new record. Mm -hmm. And also we wanted to try and increase our YouTube presence because we really we had a channel. We had a couple of things up there, but we really weren't doing anything with YouTube. Yeah. And um, so we started writing songs and we um, we started something called Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. Yeah. Um, where we record, uh, you know, a short, they were very short in the beginning, maybe five or 10 minutes long. And we actually started uh, recording them just on Rodney's iPhone, like at rehearsal spaces. And uh, we, we put them out like every Saturday. Um, and we got started like in February, but, you know, March rolled around and then things hit, uh, hit the fan. Yep. And uh, uh, we, we couldn't get, but get together and rehearse anymore, uh, at least for a while. Um, but we decided to keep going with the video stuff, and we've been doing that ever since then. I think we're about up to 140 shows now. Um, you know, we record a, a, a video now over Zoom every Thursday yep. night and uh, gets edited and put together and uh, put out on Saturday morning. Who's editing it? Are you? Uh, Joe uh, does most of the editing. Rodney okay. does sometimes. I'm not too good with video stuff. Um, well, I, I know you like more. doing other stuff, like the albums and stuff, so I just didn't know if that was... Another thing in your yeah, wheelhouse. Videos, I don't know. I, I, I don't know why I have. I mean, I'm a graphic artist. I should have plenty of uh, skills with uh, visuals and stuff, but video kind of baffles me a little bit. Um, really? But um, but yeah. So so we've kept that going. I mean, the goal was to sort of release a video while we were writing the new songs and mm -hmm. while we were putting the album together. Um, so we really. All we could do is basically was record demos at home and not really get together and practice and learn new songs. We would send out, uh, you know, files to each other to check out. And, yeah. You know, Roddy might add some vocals or Joe would add some guitar and whatnot. But, um, it, you know, it wasn't for months and months later. I guess it wasn't until the fall of. Uh, I can't remember, actually, when we started up again, um, I guess when it maybe last summer, a year ago, when it was kind of safe to go get back together so, yeah it's, it's been yeah, a blur I, I, i've lost track of everything now right so we we recorded um we finally had like seven or eight songs ready to go um by the fall of last year like november of 2021 and we recorded all of those and then mm -hmm. we um spent some more time writing uh and in the interim we we actually got back to playing some live shows this year for the first time in three years uh, nice. We played four shows in the spring, and um, and then we spent this summer basically finishing up all the rest of the songs for the album. And in fact, it was uh, uh, last weekend that we recorded the uh, final tracks nice. for the new record. So we have all the songs recorded; they're not mixed yet, but um, we hope to get them mixed by the end of the year. And maybe they'll maybe the whole thing will come out sometime, uh, maybe first or second quarter of next year. So yeah, we're pretty excited about getting that. That's together. awesome. <laughs> that be, so that's twenty three. You guys, your last full album was two thousand fourteen, right? Uh, I guess the last full album we had was back right, then. Was we, the, had the, we had the pretty uh, music for the, uh, EP. Yeah, right. 
and we did a we did a fascist crew thing single. Yes. Um, we've been working with a, a really cool label here in Philly called the Giving Groove, um, where you know profits go to a charity of the artist choosing. Um, and we've chosen a a music education group that works with the Philadelphia school system. So we're pretty happy with with everything. Cool. That, well, that I'll put that link underneath the show. Everyone's listening. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you the links. I'll put stuff. all the links and the YouTube for for them, and and but the, the, all this other stuff too. The charity, I'll put that underneath there too. Cool, thank you. You can know, support that. It's always important to help music in school. I think music in school is so important for kids. Oh, so I important. definitely agree. Yeah, it's great. It's as, as important as sports is, you know, if, so if you don't have a sports mind, you, you're a music mind or an art mind. It has to be something yeah, for the right. kids besides, you know, that's the outlet for their creativity. Yeah. It's just so important, you know? So that's very cool. That's very cool. How exciting. So new album, your rights back, you're pretty busy over, over the, over COVID as far as the band's concerned. We well, tried to, try to keep busy. Yeah. And, and you also have another band too. Talk about that one. Uh, on yeah, that? I play. I play in another band in Philadelphia here called uh, I Think Like Midnight, which is an instrumental band. Um, I've been playing music with my friend Andrew, uh, the guitar player in the band, for 25, 30 years, um, and we've done home recording projects and stuff over the years. Um, and uh, I don't know, like six or seven years ago, he had a bunch of. Uh, little song snippets and uh, you know almost completed songs and we have a friend who lives in upstate New York who had us a home studio and he said let's go out for the weekend and see if we can put something together and um, uh, we uh, we went up and recorded and uh, you know the songs came together and the first album came out um, and uh, after a while, we were like, well, you know, it'd be kind of fun maybe to play a show or two. Maybe we could put like a, a band together. It wouldn't have to be anything serious. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And we uh, found a great bass player. And uh, actually, Joe from the Milkman was our keyboard player for a while. <laughs> um, uh, but he's uh, since bowed out to do other projects. Um, but we found a great new keyboard player uh, last year. And uh, yeah, we've we've kept up with that. Um, in fact, we have a gig this Saturday. If you're in the Philadelphia area, um, yeah. I don't know when this will go live. Probably after this weekend, but it um, could go up sooner. Where, where, <laughs> where, where are you playing? Well, maybe I'll, I'll, well, I'll we're playing at the the Maniunk, uh, uh, Maniunk, uh, Roxborough. They call it the what do they call it? Roxy Yunk Porch Fest. I don't know. Do you have porch fests in your area where a town will? designate a day and uh, people will sign up to host a band on their front porch or their front yard really oh, and um, yeah. people can wander around town and see all these bands there's like a, a schedule posted and Are you serious uh, that yeah. sounds so like awesomely made up like not true like, like it's no a movie. it's, it's like, pleasant there's a couple of them around here we've played one we played uh, the one in in west philly a bunch of times um and we've played uh once or twice over in new jersey and this is the, uh, and we played up in, I guess, uh, uh, near Princeton. And this one, I think, is just getting started this year. So we'll see how it does. Um, hopefully, I think the weather is going to be decent. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. You can just wander around and uh, see different bands. And uh, people have, like, you know, uh, beer and snacks. And it's just, a, and it's free and, you know, family friendly. So it's it's really awesome. That sounds awesome. I'm going to have to look it up after this because I never heard yeah. of that. That's, that's really cool, you know. This is another really fun thing to do. Um, you know, creative, but it's like family friendly is good too as we're getting older now. Yep. You want to keep doing music. Um, I know on Instagram you're, you're pretty pretty prolific with uh keeping up with what's going on with you. <laughs> Lots of photos and videos. <laughs> I yeah, I like to do Instagram. Uh it's probably my preferred uh, social media spot. Um I saw yeah. you, you had done your, uh, the point I was going to get to was one of the things with your modules and your, your, uh, electronic. yeah, I do. Yeah. I do some synth stuff, um, on my own. I I've got my own band camp, uh, page. I've been doing that for a little while. Um, I usually, it takes me about a year or so to come up with enough tracks to put out something, but, uh, yeah, I like to noodle around with synthesizers and, uh, uh, in the background there, you can see I have got like an electronic drum kit and I've got some guitars here and uh, there's some synth stuff over that way. And um, yeah, I, I enjoy that. It's usually a, you know, a late night session on the computer, just kind of recording tracks and putting stuff together. It takes me a little while. 
I don't think I could ever get anything done because what I would do is I'd make a sound, I'd hear another sound, and I'd probably keep going, and I'd snowball, and three hours go by, I'm like, oh, what was that sound again? And I couldn't find it, and I'd go back yeah. to it. I would get nothing done. So Sometimes, yeah, I mean, I, re I record a track or two on the computer, and then, you know, it might be another month before I get back to it, so. Um, it just seems like a rabbit hole of sounds. Yeah, Especially with the fun. modules, you can keep plugging in and changing it, you know, yeah. and, and, and going on from there. Uh, with with this actual so playing some gigs with the other band what about with the the Muckman? are you going to be doing any, any playing out with that hopefully with the new album yeah or? we have two more two more shows this fall um we're playing actually uh october 22nd which is coming up what in a week and a half hmm. um it's uh baltimore it's actually in towson which i guess is a little nearby suburb of uh, baltimore um haven't played down that way in a, in a while and that'll be fun and then the last show we're going to do this year is in ardmore pennsylvania which is also like a suburb of philadelphia yeah um, so we've got you know we played four in the spring and two so we only six shows this year but next year with the new record coming out hopefully we'll do a lot more um i'd say over the past like 10 years we've tried to play anywhere between 10 and 15 shows a year i mean we don't go on massive tours anymore but um we do like to play shows uh, a lot of the time it's like a like a fly out weekend like you know we'll fly out to the midwest yeah. and play chicago milwaukee and i don't know somewhere else st louis or something well, a lot of shows are great for bands because you get out and you, you salute your time get some sleep you get a good paycheck you fly back home it really sounds like it's the best deal ever yeah Especially well, it, it, you're it on a exactly. bill with all your fans too so you can see your friends and everything else too right yeah it's it's been good it's been good Excellent. So I'm going to say, I want to thank you for this time tonight, but I, I want to ask you one last question. What are your five go-to albums? And they can be new or old. Like, what are you listening to now? What can your fans like know what you're listening to? Like, you're like, it's always great to turn your fans on to other music. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you old or new? It doesn't matter. Five. Um, let's see. Five albums. Um, gosh. No reason for it. Own. Yeah. Go for it. Go um, the, that's the point. It's supposed to be spontaneous. Nothing planned. I don't, you know, <laughs> if you're, if you're, you're always doing the five you have the same questions and it's, it's rough man right uh, well there's a band that i discovered a couple of weeks ago um from amsterdam uh i listen to when i drive mm -hmm. and, and especially on wednesday nights when i drive to milkman rehearsal it's about a 45 minute drive i listen to on my car over the internet i listen to um uh bbc radio six music um and there's a DJ that I like, uh, I think his name is Gideon Co. He's on, on, I guess it's late night there. It's probably mm -hmm. like nine to midnight there, but I'm driving at six o'clock. <laughs> um, anyway, he played a track by this band called um, Global Charming and their album is called uh, Mediocre Comma Brutal. I think it came out like two years ago um, and I just love it. He played one of the tracks, which is kind of like a, uh, like the old uh, uh, motoric, uh, you know, synthy stuff, but they're a guitar-based yeah. band. Um, there's a little keyboard, but um, it was kind of groovy and, and driving, and it was good driving music. Um, so I like that. That's, I've been listening to that a lot. Um, what else? I like a band. Uh, uh, maybe I'll just tell you bands, because I like a band yeah, called yeah, yeah, Kiln. Yeah. Um, Kiln are... Uh, an instrumental group. Um, they're probably a, a group that uh, is one of the influences on, I think, like Midnight. They do um, guitar-based uh, instrumental rock. Um, I also think it's probably, uh, they're kind of a little mysterious. I don't know too much about the band. Um, they fun. probably do a lot of file sending around and, and not get together in the same room kind of thing. Um, so check out Kiln. Um, what else? Uh, I listen to uh, a, a fair amount of jazz, um, mostly like stuff from the, the from the fifties and the sixties, like uh, bebop and kind of old school jazz. Um, I listen to a lot of jazz too, too myself. Even today, I listen to like Joe Pass, and I was listening to you know, and I'll go up to Alan Holsworth. I'll kind of go back and forth between the years. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, but my favorite, uh, one of my favorite jazz artists is Dexter Gordon, saxophonist. 
Yep. Um, and there's one album that came out a long time ago that my wife and I absolutely love. It's just, a, it's actually a compilation. It's called Ballads. Um, it has mostly like slower uh, stuff on it, but uh, I mean, he's just a beautiful, uh, wonderful sax player. Um, and what else? Uh, hmm, what have I heard recently? I'm gonna check these out. I like. I like. I, like, I mean, I, I listen to a lot of different stuff. I yeah, listen to classical music here at the house. Yeah. Um, you know, like uh, like uh, Bach and Beethoven. Um, um, one of the, the reasons I like the the um, Radio Six uh, music from BBC is mm -hmm. that they play all kinds of things that normally don't get played over here in the states. And so right. I, I've heard lots of. You know, I, I can't name names, but I've heard lots of different. I get that. Radio. Artists. I, I go. I do that. I do really. Like, I do like recommends, and I go like if this artist is here, then I'll go to this one and this one. So to me, I love. And when you hear this, like we're talking now, or I spoken to a nice guy who's in a um a, like a death metal band, and we're talking about albums. He's like, oh, I just got the Taylor Swift album. I was not expecting that. So then I'm like, well, I said, because there's no such thing as guilty music. I don't believe in that. You you like what you no, like. No, no. Yeah, and I'm like, well, I said, I said, I said I, you know, on a soft spot for me is like ABBA or or the Bee Gees, especially like way early, early, yeah. early, you know. I'm like, so everyone's got their soft spots too. You know, it doesn't have to be like heavy all the time or, or crazy. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So that's why it's interesting. And I, and I don't think, I don't think everybody so pre understands that, that like the artists they listen to are not just like, you know, like you're like, just like listening to punk from the eighties. You're like, no, you're like using that everything. Right. And it's yeah, important it's... for everybody to start looking at other music that's not on the radio. The internet is the best tool to find new music. Yeah. No, I would agree with that. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I'm driving in my car listening to the radio, but it's not really the radio. It's like over the internet. It's internet radio. <laughs> right, right, right. It, which gives them a lot more control to what you want to hear. People can just do their own radio, almost like pirate radio is just so out there now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or us talking in a podcast and talking about music. I do a lot of record yeah. shows where we talk about just records from different time periods. And because, right. you know, it's, I'll plug, it's um, I'll plug Rodney. Rodney does a radio yeah. show. He does the first Friday of every month. Uh, he does a, a internet only radio uh, show. He puts together a program of um, like mostly uh, industrial style music. Rodney's really into industrial music. And, uh, you know, he, he's on a crusade to get pe more people to listen to industrial music and he'll talk to you for hours about it. Um, but if you check out his show, which um, I believe the archive episodes are up there uh, yeah. and I'll get you a link to that. Please do. Um, uh, you know, it's great that, I mean, he's, he's trying to expose some artists that probably don't get a lot of airplay anywhere mm -hmm. else, which is great. So, which is always important, you know, yeah. or to bring in new fans from other genres too, you know, That's exactly. One of the goals of this show, I'll have somebody on this type of music, then the next artist will be totally different. Yeah. You know? And you're like, well, I don't even know I like it, but you, you hear the artist, you're like, oh, they're kind of nice. Let me just hear it again. And then once you have like a, a like you feel like you know the artist or some kind of connection, then when you hear the music again, you're like, oh, I, I kind of get it now, you know? Right. And it opens you up a little bit more. So yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. All right, man. I just want to thank you. This has been pretty, pretty awesome to, to have you, you on. And uh send me your links. And uh, I have to have Rodney on. We'll have to, I'll have to pack a lunch there. <laughs> For an <laughs> evening to get it to go deep with him. <laughs> All right. Well, that's cool. That's cool.